Science is the story of humanity in some sense. Gus and I live in Phoenix and we went and saw Lawrence um, doing one of his origins projects in, um, at ASU and he had all the big names of science there, Steven Pinker, uh, Stephen Hawking was supposed to be there, Richard was there and it was like going to Woodstock but for science and people were getting, you know, instead of getting albums signed, they were getting books signed and it was just this incredible vibe and energy and we just thought somebody needs to capture this. And I said, look, we'll just we'll get what we can get and we'll, we'll see what comes of it. And it ended up being a nice little rock and roll tour film across the world following Richard and Lawrence um, talking about science and reason. And um, it, I think it's a unique kind of film and I'm really happy with how it turned out. No, I'm not preaching anything. Uh, first of all, I'm talking about science and, I, and my prime job is to do science. But I think I've always felt that if I'm doing science, I, we need to disseminate it at the same time. Uh, and both those are equally important, and I try and split my time between them. But I'm not evangelizing anything. I'm just trying to get people excited about the real world. And they can. And and if a side product of that is that, is that they give up their religion, that's fine. I think that's on the whole a good thing. But that's less important to me than people realizing the wonder of reality. We periodically get people giving us people, not as much as you'd imagine. I think it's somewhat self-selecting. Even the people who come to the, the shows and, and, and disagree are usually fairly respectful. Now, sometimes at big events, and you can see it in the movie, there are protesters outside. In Melbourne especially, we ran into some very interesting stuff at the, uh, I think it was the Global Atheism Convention. Um, one end of the building, Muslim protesters, other end of the building, Christian protesters. I was really hoping we could get the two groups together, but um, it just never happened. Every now and then there is some pushback. We, I remember when the movie first had its world premiere in Toronto, we did a remote, Richard and I, with a, a CNN host who was incredibly aggressive, as if, uh, as if questioning religion was something that shouldn't be done. That surprised me, actually. But on the whole, um, uh, the reception has been uh, has been positive, and and I'm I'm uh, I'm actually pretty happy about the after the movie had its first showing in Arizona, a big to a big test audience, about three thousand people. Uh, one of the things that surprised me, because they the these guys did a, a questionnaire of people to get a sense, of, you know, it was a test showing, and the people were asked a religion and and their, their level of religion, and what really surprised me is the people who were most religious, mo almost. 100% of them said that they would recommend the movie to a friend, and that really surprised me. The other thing that surprised me, or pleased me, is that, it, is that people then said it, they, they spent the whole night afterwards at going out to a restaurant and, and having a discussion. And that's the point of the movie, is to provoke discussion. Oddly, you know, this, this seems like something that is sort of a love letter to the fan base. But, um, and, and so, sort of contrary to what even we thought, is that we're finding that it's reaching other people. It's reaching the religious groups because they're, they're at least interested in the argument. One of the things is often said is we're talking to the, preaching to the converted. It's not the case. What we're doing is, uh, and, I, and, and we didn't put in the movie because it seemed kind of self-serving, but every day, both before the movie and after the movie, people have said that our writing or speaking, or in this case the movie, have emboldened them. I mean, it's, it's people who are, I think, already confused, but some of them felt like that they were some, there was something wrong with them. And what this gives them the opportunity to realize is that they're, they're not alone. There are lots of people who feel that way, and there's nothing wrong about feeling that way. People ask them all the time, you know, can, are we making a difference? Are these things that you're doing, uh, these books that you're writing, these talks that you give, does it change people's minds? And I'm here to tell you that uh, being on the road with them for an extended period of time, they're changing minds every day. People seem to be intimidated by science, and it's it's unfortunate because science is a vital part of our culture. It's it's uh, it's a central part of what makes our civilization what it is, and it should be appreciated and enjoyed more broadly. But for some reason, it's put on a separate pedestal. It's it unlike art and music and literature. People feel you have to be a scientist to understand science or appreciate it. Now, you don't have to be a musician. You don't have to be Eric Clapton to appreciate guitar music. You don't have to be Pablo Picasso to appreciate art. You don't have to be William Shakespeare to appreciate his plays. But somehow people seem to think, when it comes to science, you know, all bets are off. And we owe it to the public, because these are some of the most exciting ideas that humans have ever developed. 
to disseminate that more broadly. And I think people really are craving that. They just often don't know what they're craving is science. They, they think science is the stuff they learned at school that was scary or boring. And once they realize that it's the questions that they ask, why are we here, where do we come from, where are we going, are we alone in the universe, all of these fascinating questions are scientific questions, and they can participate in understanding the remarkable developments that have taken place, people get turned on.